Um, I love what Aaron was saying just about being in the home. And I think for me, as I'm on staff at our church as well, and um, I help lead 10,000 Fathers, and we have people into our home from those um, different places. But then I also just live in community, you know, and I'm part of a soccer team and the PTA at school. And then I have four boys, um, so I'm a part of having them in my home. And so it gets, when it gets down to the nitty gritty of um, 10 teenage boys coming in late at night and messing everything up and saying they're hungry and I'm tired and want to go to bed, <laughs> like how am I hosting in that context, right? How am I hosting um, my husband? How am I hosting the Holy Spirit just within myself? So I think what we want to look at is just getting down to the organic side of how are we people who just host the presence of God first, then how are, we, how are our marriages, how, how is our parenting, how do our families look, and then how does that affect the church? Um, because I think sometimes we look at it backwards. So we wanted to just take a little bit of time. That's why Cameron started with the identity and the security of who we are in the Lord. We have to look at that first because we have to know who we are to be able to sit with someone, to be able to invite someone in our home. If we're insecure and we feel like we're not worth anything and we're too embarrassed to have people in our house, um, you see how that plays out. So um, we wanted to start with how are our hearts in just hosting the presence of the Lord? Then how does that affect our relationships? Um, so as we get started on just the topic of hospitality, that word, what I wanted you guys to do is take just a few seconds and just talk to your neighbor. What is hospitality? Just discuss that with someone beside you. From your experience, what does the word hospitality mean to you? Okay, share with me one or two thoughts you had about hospitality. Someone yell out some things, some words that describe hospitality to you. Welcoming. Welcoming, great. Open. Comfortable. Giving. Attentive. Feel like they're at home when they're not at home. Awesome. Bringing in strangers. Serving. Great. Those are awesome examples. Um, I want us to look at this definition of um, what Webster says about hospitality. It says, hospitality is the friendly reception and treatment of guests and strangers. It's the quality or disposition of receiving and treating guests and strangers in a warm and friendly, generous way. So, great job, guys. <laughs> Um, and I love, there's a quote by Henry Nowen in this book that you guys should read at some point. It's called Reaching Out. But he says this, um, it's not just receiving a stranger in our house, but as a fundamental attitude towards one another, which can, can be expressed in a variety of ways. So about the attitude, not just the location, right? I love that. So as we've had people in our home, it's been really interesting to watch people walk into a strange house, they were strangers to us, we didn't know them, and to be extremely nervous and anxious. Um, we had a guy come in from Vermont a couple years ago, and he was so uptight that it made the whole room feel uncomfortable, you know, <laughs> when he walked in. Um, but as we just greeted him and said, we're so glad you're here, as we fed him food, as we gave him a bed, um, as the week went on, like slowly his shoulders started kind of going down. He started relaxing. He kind of laughed a little bit. Um, but by the end of it, watching his disposition, watching how he changed was so amazing. And it was just from doing the things you said, just being kind, just saying, you know, my home is your home. It's so simple. Um, it wasn't anything extravagant. But by the end of his time with us, 
he was opening his heart. And the Lord was dealing with the things of his heart. That if we had just been in a, um, a different location where we weren't open to just let him be who he was, I think the response would, would have been different. So it's so important for us just to open up ourselves, open up our home, and invite these people in. So I want us to look at a passage together. If you have your Bible, would you look, um, turn to Luke 7? I'm going to read this whole chunk from um, Luke 7, 36 through 50. So all throughout Scripture, we see many examples of hospitality. But I want us to look at this one together today and pick out some of the um, highlights from this passage. So I'm going to read it to you first, and then we'll talk through it a little bit. So Luke 7, verse 36. One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. It's talking about Jesus. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered, answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, Say it, teacher. Verse 41, A certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one, I suppose, from whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this? who even forgives sins. And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So there's so many great little nuggets I want to pull out of this passage um, real quick with you guys. So let's look at first. This is Simon's home, a Pharisee. And a woman comes in who's a prostitute. She's off the street. She was so desperate. She heard Jesus was in this home. She comes in and just falls at his feet. So she comes and acknowledges Jesus' presence, unlike Simon was even acknowledging Jesus' presence. So she was welcoming in. And guess what Jesus did? Jesus welcomed her in that space. But we see right there in the passage that Simon is like, I love it says, Simon said to himself, if this were a prophet, he would know. And it says, Jesus answered. (laughs) So I love the the little... uh, there, if he were a prophet, obviously he knows exactly what Simon's thinking. Um, so Simon is going, what is going on? What is this woman doing? Like, you can almost feel he's like embarrassed for her or, you know, and embarrassed for Jesus that he would accept this woman. But the welcome that happens in that initial, uh, in the, the beginning of that passage is so important. Jesus is genuinely welcoming this woman. And this woman is genuinely welcoming Jesus, but it's in Simon's home. So Simon is not even doing the welcoming there, but Jesus and the woman are. So how are we welcoming people, whether it be in our home groups or in church or in your home? How do you just generally welcome people for who they are? Aaron was kind of um, speaking about that, but people who are different from us, when they act different than we think is appropriate, what do we do? Are we like so embarrassed? Are we judging them? Are we just welcoming them and just seeing who they are? And appreciating the gift that they're bringing. So that's the first thing I want us to look at. It's just generally welcoming people in our home. Then second, I want us to look at um, there that this woman who who poured out the alabaster flask there, um, that they say that's worth a year's wages. So it was a very extravagant gift for her to give to Jesus. And I think that's what Simon and some of the people were thinking too. Like, why is she even doing this? This is ridiculous. Why is she doing this? But she was generously and extravagantly giving to Jesus. 
And this is what I love about Jesus. All throughout Scripture, that's who he is. He's an extravagant and generous God. We were singing about that earlier. So I love it, the feeding of the 5,000. Guess what? There were 12 baskets left over. I love when the water, um, when the wine ran out at the wedding feast. Guess what? Jesus shows up and turns water into wine. (laughs) And then there's more than enough. And then we see in John 21, even when the disciples were fishing and their nets are empty, there's nothing there. And then it says there's 153 fish left over that they pull out. Isn't that wild? And take some time and look at those different stories because in the beginning, you see that the disciples, the people in the scripture are are like, what are we going to do? There's all these people. We have no food. And it's like, then Jesus. <laughs> and what are we going to do? We, you know, we have no more wine. Then Jesus. What are we going to do? There's no fish. Well, then Jesus shows up. So how are we being extravagantly generous with all the Lord has given us, even if it's just a little alabaster jar? So it's not about what we have, but it's about what we do with what we have and what we've been given. So as Aaron was saying, sometimes we think, well, we could be hospitable if we had this, if we were these people. But that's not what the Lord has called us to. He's been an example of generosity for us and provided for us. And whatever that looks like for you, what are you doing with what he's given you? So how are we being extravagantly generous with all the Lord has given us? And the third thing I want us to look at um, in that passage is just the, the vulnerability and the authenticity of the lady and of Jesus coming in, the woman coming in. So obviously, if she was stepping into the setting and it felt awkward, um, I'm sure it felt awkward, but she didn't care. She was like, I have to do this. I have to give to Jesus now. I can't stop this. And she was extremely authentic and vulnerable. So how are we creating atmospheres where we are authentic and vulnerable? And it takes courage to be courageously vulnerable. So we can't just be people who are vulnerable in an unhealthy way. So you know people who just, whatever they're thinking, it has to come out of their mouths. That's not what I'm talking about. (laughs) I'm not just talking about dumping out everything you think. But I'm talking about being authentic to what the Lord's put in you for the occasion. And so the challenge for us in being vulnerable is to being mature followers of Jesus who are walking in the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, (laughs) self-control. That's all in there. But how are we creating atmosphere, atmospheres where people can just come before Jesus and be who they are? How can we be who the Lord's asked us to be in these circumstances? So how are we being courageously vulnerable? And then lastly in the passage, um, we see how, as Aaron was speaking about this earlier too, but how are we being inclusive? So this was not a, a setting where this woman was invited. This was in Simon's home, a Pharisee's home. She was not supposed to be there. But Jesus didn't tell her to leave. He included her in that setting. So whether this be in your home, at church, at school, in the grocery store, wherever it is, how are you seeing people in the way that Jesus sees them? So how are we including people in the different settings that we're at? So how, in in stepping into hospitality, moving away from that hostility, as Aaron was talking about, from the burdens in our heart, releasing those burdens, moving towards hospitality, how are we being welcoming? How are we being generous? How are we being vulnerable? And how are we being inclusive? And I think if we can move towards those elements that we see in Luke 7, we can have a community, a healthier environment um, that's growing in the way that we want it to. So all throughout Scripture, we see different places where hospitality is mentioned. I want to just read um, to you guys two more Uh, scriptures about hospitality. One is in Romans 12, and I wanted to highlight this to you because I think I grew up not learning about hospitality, but I did, as Romans 12 talks about, I did grow up learning to love, um, I'll just read to you, sorry, it says, um, Romans 12, verse 10, 
be devoted to one another in brotherly love, give preference to one another in honor. So I knew about love and honor, um, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. I heard a lot about serving the Lord at my church. Rejoicing in hope. I heard about that. Persevering in tribu tribulation, devoted to prayer. I heard a lot about prayer. Contributing to the needs of saints and then practicing hospitality. It's like in the same category. Isn't that amazing? So as important as, as it is to serve and love and do these things, practice hospitality. How are we doing that? And then 1 Peter 4, 9, I wanted to highlight this to you. Um, in starting verse 8, Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaint. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Isn't that encouraging? So we see the value of hospitality in the kingdom of God and why it has value. So as we saw with Simon in Luke 7, there are barriers to us being hospitable people. So what are the reasons that, that you personally, that as a community, um, what are the reasons that keep you from being welcoming? What keeps you from being generous? what keeps you from being vulnerable, and what keeps you from being inclusive. So I think we have to recognize what those barriers are to move towards um, being free from them, right? So I know for us, um, when Aaron and I got married, the first thing for me was well, we didn't have money, we didn't have space, right? Those are real things. Like, we, we're, what are we going to do? How are we going to have people over? So there's some really practical things of, of um, us feeling like we can't be hospitable towards others. For me, I had grown up just believing I wasn't good enough. People didn't, you know, my presence wasn't a value. So if I believe that about myself, then why am I going to want to open up to anyone? So what's the barrier that's keeping you from stepping towards hospitality? So the goal is to recognize the barriers and then for us to take steps towards um, being free from those barriers, okay? So um, I wanted to read one more thing to you guys. I think we're, I think we're okay on time. Um, I wanted to read one more thing to you guys. So for Aaron and I, um, when we moved to Snellville, Georgia, which is where we live, we really valued these um, characteristics of being hospitable, but we couldn't find a place that we wanted people to be this way towards us, okay? So we want to find a place where we could be welcome. We couldn't find it, so guess what? We had to create it. So perhaps you've, you're in that space too. So instead of looking around you all the time thinking, why didn't someone ever have me over? Why can't, you know, just do it. Like, you be that for the people in this community. Look in your neighborhood. Maybe, maybe you need to start something in your neighborhood. Maybe you need to be the one on the soccer team to invite your friends over. Maybe you need to be the one to start a, a home group. So before we look, this exercise is supposed to help us look into ourselves, not at if we could change everybody else, this would be a great, hospitable community. <laughs> so first look to yourself and then start um, figuring out the things to overcome those barriers to lead you towards hospitality, okay? So I wish we had a little bit more time to do that exercise but I'm going to trust that you're going to go away <laughs> and process through that with somebody else. But as we were um, trying to create a community, um, we received this letter in the mail, and so I just wanted to read it to you just to show you that as we took a step towards what we thought the Lord was calling us to, how it was impacting um, someone around us. So this is from um, a couple that's on staff at our church, and when I received this in the mail, I thought she sent it to the wrong house because I actually didn't remember ever having them over to our house, <laughs> which is terrible. But um, I, it was just a practice. We were just having people over. And so I thought, did we ever have them over? I don't remember. That probably says a lot more about me. Anyway, okay, so it says, um, Aaron and Megan, I know my heart has felt so much gratitude for you both lately, but even more, we both want to say how thankful we are for your example of love, the love that you share. Um, it's probably so second nature once I share why. Other than um, this other couple, you guys were the first family to invite us into your home after we had been in Snellville for a couple of years, like on staff at our church for a couple of years, guys. We've watched since then the numerous amount of friends and families you've had over into your most personal of familial places. 
It was something we'd never really seen in our first few years of marriage, and it has shown us what a beautiful picture that is of intimacy and creating community. We love to see you guys not in a rush to exude perfection in your home, but rather the simple act of being together. So thank you for doing something I'm sure is so second nature to you, but the way of the Lord. We have noticed, been thankful for, and are grateful for your authenticity. Thank you for being people of rest and beautiful hosts to the Lord. We are grateful for you. But I share all that to say, you have no idea what people are longing for. When you just think, I'll just, you know, I'll just open up the door, have them in. It's not a big deal. It's last minute. It's a rush. But what an impact. And I, and I was sad that after being on staff at our church for years, we were the first people to invite them over. So let's don't be that community, okay? Let's be people who are willing to step into some hard spaces and overcome things that are keeping us from being hospitable. So I want to pray for us as we end, and then we'll go into our next thing. I just want to pray this blessing over you. May we be people who are willing to release our hostilities and embrace the hospitality that the Lord offers us. May we be people who are welcoming, generous, vulnerable, and inclusive. May our homes reflect your heart, Father. I just pray that you would bless each of us as we're on this journey moving from hostility to hospitality. That you would give us courage to examine where we are and courage to press into what you have for us. That we would reflect your kingdom in our hearts and in our homes. In Jesus' name, amen.